fun to run. In the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he defeated a loaded field that included multiple grade one winners, Omaha Beach and Improbable. His brilliant speed figures were among the fastest of any three-year-old at a mile or more. And he hails from the legendary Danzig Sire Line. Multiple graded stakes winner, millionaire, Breeders' Cup champion, spun to run, new for 2021, standing at Gainesway. Well, maybe the most significant week of preps on tap this Saturday with the Santa Anita Derby, the Wood Memorial, and the Bluegrass Stakes. I'm Jay Privman, along with Marty McGee, here to preview those significant Derby prep races as part of our Derby Watch Top 20 coverage here at DRF.com. Marty, let's start with the race that you're going to be uh, writing about, have been writing about, and will be attending that is the Bluegrass Stakes on Saturday, and we're starting with that because Essential Quality, who's the favorite in that race, is the current favorite for the Kentucky Derby. What are your expectations for him on Saturday? Well, uh, odds maker Mike Battaglia has made him three to five, which is pretty strong in the field of nine that runs Saturday in the Bluegrass. I would imagine he'll be right about that, maybe even a tick lower because, Jay, there's really not a whole lot of competition. It wouldn't seem in here. Uh, and so favoritism in the Kentucky Derby is his for the taking, you would certainly think. Uh, he comes well drawn in post four with Luis Saez, who, by the way, is having a pretty good week, uh, having won the Dubai World Cup last Saturday. So uh, it's all systems go for, for essential quality. He worked good at uh, fairgrounds on Saturday before leaving out. He arrived at Keeneland on Monday. Uh, Brad Cox has nothing but nice things to say about him, and uh, he is the reigning champion and the one to beat clearly in the bluegrass and then maybe going forward to the Kentucky Derby. And we know that he likes Keeneland having won two major races there last fall, including the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He's had the one race so far this year in the Southwest. And now, as Marty says, heads on to the bluegrass as an odds-on favorite for that race on Saturday. There's two other horses on our Derby Watch Top 20 that are in the bluegrass stakes. In fact, eight horses on our Top 20 list are going to be in action on Saturday, Marty, let's take a look at Highly Motivated, who's shipping in for Chad Brown. He's coming off a third place finish in the Gotham Stakes. This is his first time, though, around two turns, and I'm a little bit skeptical as to how he's going to do uh, going two turns. What about you? I am, too. He's probably the second choice in the Bluegrass, Jay. Um, he, he looked terrific in winning the Nyquist on the Breeders' Cup undercard here last fall, but uh, you know that was just six and a half furlongs. The Gotham, he did have a legitimate excuse when checked pretty hard about uh, a quarter mile into the race down the backside. Uh, just couldn't make up the ground on, on the top two finishers. But um, it is Chad. You wrote uh, at length about Chad in the Friday editions of the Daily Racing Forum and his three prospects for the Derby. And uh, there's a reason he sent him here to Keeneland. One is that he won over the, uh, he won over the racetrack, as I said, last fall and he just wanted to keep him separated from the other horses he has so um you know it'd be kind of ironic i think that chad who wasn't he, who won the eclipse award for top trainer four years in a row and wasn't even nominated one wasn't one of the finalists last year uh if he were to jump up with uh the, the three-year-olds like you were you've written about uh and had major contenders for the derby after having pretty much established his reputation as a turf trainer and um you know he, he chad is really uh hopeful that uh, highly motivated and the others will run well on Saturday. Right. Uh, a, a turf trainer who's won a, uh, a, a Preakness stakes <laughs> and, and whose uh, practical joke was a three-time grade one winner on dirt. So he's, he's typecast, but uh, probably not fairly so. We'll see how highly motivated does. As Marty said, he's got uh, two other horses running in the wood, which we'll get to in a moment. But to finish off our discussion of the bluegrass stakes, Marty, Let's take a look at Rumbauer, who's shipping in from California. He was fifth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last fall in his only prior start at Keeneland. He's coming off a win on all weather at Golden Gate uh, in the El Camino Real Derby. And this is a horse they were looking at several different spots for him, including the Wood and the Santa Anita Derby. They finally settled on this. You know, I think he's a decent enough horse, but I don't know that he's at a central qualities level. What do you think? Yeah, he kind of picked up some tired ones in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last fall. I'd like to make it a little side wager that Hidden Stash beats him. We've kind of fought, a, kind of sparred a little bit, you and I, about whether or not a Hidden Stash belongs with these other horses. So I, I, I would go horse for horse with you on that. You know, Mark McCarthy, 
Uh, we're on. Michael McCarthy is one of our favorite trainers, yours and mine. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing where you, even if you don't think the horse is going to run well, I wouldn't mind seeing him uh, run good for, for Michael. So that's our look at the Bluegrass Stakes, one of the three prep races this weekend. Marty, let's turn our attention now to the Santa Anita Derby, which is going to have uh, an expected big field. They haven't quite drawn the race yet at the time of our taping this on Wednesday. But Medina Spirit expected to be the favorite in here. Stable Maid of Life is Good, who would have been a heavy favorite in the Santa Anita Derby, but he's gone to the sidelines. And as a result, a number of horses are running in this race instead. But the only one on our top 20 list is Medina Spirit coming off a second place finish to Life is Good last time out in the San Felipe. What are your expectations for him on Saturday? Well, I expect he'll be favored and he's, he's your most likely winner. Uh, it is a prime uh, opportunity for some of these other horses to go on and earn enough points to make the Derby. And uh, Medina Spirit has been a fighter other than getting outrun by his next stall uh, or in barn uh, stable mate. Life is good. And in uh, a couple of prior races and, um, you know, he's, he's shown himself to be a real fighter the way he won the Lewis and, and the way he fought off the third horse in the, uh, in the San Felipe. So this is not Bob's best shot. It, it wasn't his best shot when, when life is good was there, but also he has a concert tour in here too. But uh, I'm sure that Bob would like to see him run well and proceed to the Derby as, as one of the favorites. So uh, Medina spirit, a horse. So I think is much better off uh, stalking as opposed to going to the lead and uh, if he can get that kind of a trip here, he should be very, very tough, uh, especially, as we say, with life is good out of the race. And that's why there's a, a big field expected for the Santa Anita Derby. Finally, as far as Saturday's prep races go, another race that should have a decent sized field and has the most Derby Watch top 20 members in it is the Wood Memorial in New York. There's four horses currently on our top uh, 20 list that are in that race, two from the aforementioned Chad Brown's barn. And Marty, let's start with one of those horses, that being risk-taking, two for two around two turns. Uh, and since blinkers were added, which seems to be kind of a theme this spring among some of the improvement we've seen uh, among the better derby prospects, what are your expectations for risk-taking as he runs again at a mile and an eighth on Saturday? Well, he's running against a better crew. You know, he stayed in New York all winter, which is unlike Chad, but Chad said don't don't look too much into that. He needs to keep them separated, you know, in certain respects. So um, I, he's got to be one of the favorites, Jay. And, and given that two-turn experience he's already had, uh, I think he might be the one to, to hold off in the end. But uh, you know, a good, uh, we mentioned this on another video. It's it's good to see uh, Chad. Or it's good to see Chad have a, a, a trio of horses uh, as prospects for the Derby. Well, if uh, he's not favored, the horse who probably would be, uh, in my mind, and I think yours as well, is Prevalence. He'll be making his stakes debut, highly regarded, but lightly raced. He's a horse that you followed very, very closely when you were down at Gulfstream Park uh, over the last few months. This will be a big race for him. What are your expectations for Prevalence on Saturday? Well, this kind of reminds me of Maxfield last year in that Brendan Walsh was on a real tight schedule to try and make the Derby. And then, of course, that ended up being a moot point, but Maxfield ended up showing that he's a good horse. Um, prevalence did not beat much in that March 11th allowance at Gulfstream, but that doesn't mean that he won't match up here. And I think that the uh, betting in the wood will reflect as much. He could vie for favoritism. Brendan Walsh is hot. Uh, his, his barn continues to thrive. He won one of the Dubai races last weekend. And uh, I know that Jimmy Bell is uh, really excited for the Go, Go Dolphin people. Um, in terms of uh, how this horse has a chance to make the Kentucky Derby. And uh, Prevalence is a horse who uh, watched a video of his on uh, XBTV. I thought his last work was terrific. So he looks to me like he's coming in to a really, really uh, top performance on Saturday. But he'll need to because he's going to be going around two turns and taking on far more seasoned stakes horses at a track where he's never raced before. And two of the horses who have raced at Aqueduct and raced well there are Weyburn and crowded trade, the one-two finishers in the Gotham last time out. Marty, this is a one-turn mile, but I think both these horses showed that they ought to be okay going two turns, especially the winner, Weyburn. What are your uh, expectations for these two? Man, Weyburn really fought back gamely. At the eighth pole, it looked like crowded trade was just going to draw off and win by two or three, but no. 
And, uh, you know, I, I think they're both going to run good races, Jade. Now, the thing about Weber and our colleague Dave Grenning is reporting that they're not fully committed to the Kentucky Derby unless he were to run really well in here. So we might have to adjust, uh, you know, we'll have to see what Jimmy Jerkins says post-race. But uh, I, I would think that both of them are uh, coming into this race in great shape. And uh, I think of the three races, uh, this could be the most interesting. Very much so. As Marty mentioned, uh, as we've mentioned, four of our Derby Watch top 20 members in the Word Memorial, eight of our top 20 members running in the three prep races this weekend that we've just looked at for you. Also here at DRF.com, you'll find a review of all the big races from last week, most notably the Florida Derby. And tomorrow, Marty and I will be doing a live seminar uh, at DRF.com and through Twitter and Facebook. So if you've got questions about any of these prep races on Saturday or any other top derby contenders, make sure you tune in for that. That begins at 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific. And, of course, here at DRF.com, where you'll find uh, the review of last week, you'll also find stories leading up to all these big races this weekend from all of our correspondents, including Marty, who's covering the Bluegrass. I've got the Santa Anita Derby, and Dave grenning has got the Wood Memorial. We'll be back next week with more as we continue on the road to the Kentucky Derby. For Marty McGee, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks, as always, for watching.